So one of uh, another favorite pastimes for everyone at Grace Hopper and Full Stack is board game nights. And it's always exciting for me when a team tries to translate something, some board game into the digital world. So this does present a number of unique challenges when transforming physical data into digital data, especially with terms of like the game state, like what data structures do you use? So Hotspot Fire Rescue, will you tell us more about your application, the game itself, your experience, and where we can start playing it? Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jing Wang, and they are my teammates, Anna Kubano, Marina Hoshi, and Lin Jiang. We built a game, Hotspot Fire Rescue, which is a multiplayer board game based off the board game Flashpoint Fire Rescue. It is a collaborative board game that all the players are on the same game, same team, and they win or lose the game together. To win, players must rescue seven victims trapped inside a burning building before the fire gets out of control or the building collapses. We decided to build this game because we enjoyed playing it, and it was a good challenge for us to implement all the game logic. An online version would also make setting up the game faster and easier. Now, Anna will go through our website and start the game. Thanks, Jing. Now here we see a, a user log in using Google OAuth. She will go straight to the lobby page because she already knows how to play the game. But if the user is new, game rules are also available on site. We can add a lobby, but we're just going to go into lobby one. Now we can go ahead and make our new player. She will choose the Firewoman Marina avatar. Other players can also join in before the game starts. We also have the option of adding more than one player per user, should the user want to know how to play the game on their own. Now on the next page, we see four sections. The first section is the avatar list, with AP or action points used to perform various tasks. And then there's the chat box, and then there's the board that represents the burning house. And the last one is the scoring board on the bottom right. And now Marina will explain to us how the game plays. So thank you, Anna. So here you see the player moving around the game grid where highlighted cells indicate possible next moves and extinguishing a fire, as firefighters do. If a player wants to communicate with their teammates about possible strategies they want to take or about the game in general, they can use the chat box on the right. You're seeing players moving towards a victim indicated with the question mark. If a player is able to carry the victim outside of the building walls, that victim will be rescued, and the rescued victim counter on the lower right will be incremented. Next to player, this player will end her turn and write a message about her successful rescue. So for a front end in our app, we use React to make modular components and Redux to, for game state management. For the back end, we use Node.js and Firebase for their real-time NoSQL database and authentication. We chose to use Firebase because our hotspot is a real-time multiplayer game and players need to immediately see the results of other players' actions on the board. To go into more detail, whenever a player dispatches an action to their local game state on Redux, that update is also sent to a shared Firebase database. Then Firebase will send the updated state to all the players, so everyone will stay in sync with the latest version of the game board. Now let me describe the Redux store in more detail and about some challenges we faced. Thank you, Marina. During our development process, one of the biggest challenges was keeping track of all the state changes on the game board, because uh, Sometimes one single action can affect not only the boss day, but also possibly the players, the walls, and the doors as well. So we decided to use Redux, which is very helpful for modularizing our code and also um, separating our logic among different components. One example of actions that can affect multiple states at once is when explosion happens. If there's walls and doors near the explosion site, we have to update them to be destroyed or to be damaged. We also need to keep track of all the total damage count to see if the building it will collapse, causing the user to lose the game. Finally, we need to update the board uh, state 
uh, because sometimes the fire may spread to the adjacent cell due to the explosion. During the project, we all enjoyed working together as a team and also learned a lot from each other. If you are interested in our game, please feel free to check out our website shown here. Thank you for watching. What a fun game. I hope our remote team can play that at their next uh, game night. It looked great. I mean, I think one thing I always get so impressed by, by students who build games is how much art direction they seem to inherit, like, naturally. Yeah. And one pattern I really like there that I would love to see explored more is the idea of Firebase and then has a global state and Redux as local state. That's a really cool pattern that yeah. I think a lot of students have discovered um, naturally on their own. So, Which has its Redux. own, you know, difficulties like they talked about. But very interesting. I'm... I'm Excited about that.